everyone! Welcome back to Project Spatial. I am Katie Scheuer and I am committed to making sure that you get to increase your spatial impact this next year. So I do videos every week on GIS and spatial strategy and all the things that go into creating a great GIS department within an organization. And if you want to make sure that you see more videos, hit the subscribe button down below. I'd really love to have you back. Um, we just hit over 100 subscribers, not very recently, and um, I'm really excited about that. So I wanted to make sure that we get our reach out to everybody that we can. So I did another video, which is this one right here, and I was really kind of inspired to do a more in-depth video on metadata by all of the comments and interaction that I had from that video. So metadata, again, is data about data. <laughs> so it is the information that tells people what your data is about, how you created it, who created it, why is it valuable, all of that good information. And we're going to go through a whole list of that today and I actually have a special treat for you guys later um, in this video, so make sure that you watch all the way to the end so you can find out what that is. So the first one that I wanna look at is the US standard, and I'm gonna read it off here. It's the content standard for digital geospatial metadata. And this is a common one that's used in the US by mostly US government organizations. Um, as in federal government organizations, it was put, put together by the Federal Geospatial Committee and they kind of came together as a consensus on this is the metadata information that is important to us. Now, if you are international, there is the ISO standards and that's the International Standard Organization. That's what it is, <laughs> International Standard Organization. So the ISO standards were created very similar to the U.S. federal standards where there was a committee that came together and all of the people decided that these are the standards that they want to set and this is the information that they want to maintain for their metadata to be able to use everything across internationally. If you're not dealing with data that is for federal use or even for international use and you don't have to worry about kind of the larger standards, then you might be kind of going, well, what do I do? Some of this information is just for our company and we don't really care if we have all of the federal standards covered. And that's fine. Um, Esri actually gives you two different types that are more simplified. Um, there's the ArcGIS metadata, which is a little bit more encompassing. It's closer to the ISO standards and the US federal standards, but also there is just the item description metadata that you can edit straight in Esri. It's super convenient and it's great for those pieces of information that you know are not going to really travel outside of your company, but you still want to make sure that you have information attached to it, um, especially if you have multiple people in your GIS department or if you are going to be moving on to a different department, a different job, something like that. You want to make sure that you're leaving all of this information behind for the next person that comes along. Okay, so you've picked out your standard and you're trying to figure out what do I really need to include in this information? And I like to think about it through a few questions that I would ask if I came across a piece of information that I had no idea what any of it was about and I was like, okay, can I use this for my project or not? What are the questions that I would have? So the first question that I want to talk to you about with you is when and how was that data created and maintained? Now this is important because if I don't know how accurate your information is or did you take like this crazy procedure to get to the information that you have or the information that you started with wasn't very good to begin with and so your calculations might be off quite a bit, I want to know that. I also want to know, is this being maintained consistently? When was the last time it was updated? Is it 10 years old? Is it 15 years old? Did you just do it last week? Um, I want to know all of that information. The next one is, is, is this valid? Now, that's kind of a hard question to answer for people, but you want to give them as much information as you can to make sure that it is valid for them. So you want to include your spatial accuracy, you want to include your calculations accuracy, you want to include um, all of your 
fields, your domains, all of the information that you can possibly think of that would tell them how accurate your information is and where it is located and what references you used to create that information. So the next question is, can I use it? Now, this is important because our information is not fully accurate. You want to make sure that you have disclosures and disclaimers on your information. I know in the utility industry and in counties and states when you're dealing with um, utilities and things that are buried in the ground, it is very important to us to disclose that just because we have it on our maps doesn't mean that it necessarily exists in the ground. It might be old information. It might have came from an old detail drawing from the 1940s. Um, it also is probably not the exact location that it is unless we have gone out and GPSed it in, but even then we don't know for sure that that's exactly where it is anymore. Um, so you want to make sure that you're including your disclosures, you're including your disclaimers, and you're also putting your restrictions on, on can I use this and then redistribute it? Um, is there any legal ramifications for that? So the last question that I always try to consider is, is there a better version? Now, sometimes when I am looking at large data sets like a geology data set, and it might be for the entire state, but I only need it for like this little section up in you know a county or something like that. I don't need it for the whole state. So there might be a better data set that's out there that's more detailed for that particular location that I'm looking for. So it's kind of nice if you know that your data is a subset of a bigger data set, or if you have a large data set, but you know that there's smaller data sets that are available, then you might want to kind of link that information in or put a supplementary document to that. So that way people know that if I'm just looking for this county, I can actually go over here and I don't have to pay attention to the state data. So when it comes down to metadata, it is truly a value for everybody in the company. And it is something that is extremely important when you're putting together projects to make sure that you have time to do your metadata. The biggest struggle with getting metadata done for myself and I know for my colleagues is just having the time and if you block some time and some resources within your project that you know that this is going to go towards metadata creation and maintenance then you're more likely going to be able to keep it up and setting your company standards ahead of time. So to help you with that, if you did not want to use any of the standards that are already out there that have been put together by different organizations, I have a checklist for you that I have created. It's a very simple one. I will put a little picture right up here. And you can go down to the links below and I have it linked on my website and you can go on there and download it for your own use. Um, I also left a little bit on there that you can put some industry standards in there in case you have network information that you wanna add to it or you know, whatever that is valuable for your particular industry. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun putting it together and it was kind of interesting going back into all of the metadata resources. So make sure you check out all of those links down below and I will see you next time. Bye.